right um, in New York, women have been killed simply living their everyday lives, whether it's waiting for a subway or returning home after a night out. And this hits personally for me too, Amanda, as someone who's just recently started taking the subway again regularly, or the metro as we say in DC, um, as we've all returned to our offices at the Washington Post, and I am never standing close to the edge of the subway, um, of the tracks. And you know, for Asian American women especially, this has been, um, we have to watch our every move. How has it impacted you personally? Do you have any self-defense or do you carry protection with you when you travel around your everyday life? Because you travel so much all over the world. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, these acts of violence that have been targeted towards the Asian American community, especially women, have existed pre-COVID. The pandemic absolutely exacerbated these issues, especially when we had leaders um, saying things like the China virus um, or China flu. Uh, but these, uh, this reality has existed before. And you know, I, as you know, Tracy, am a uh, survivor of sexual violence. And the statistic here, just to give things a bit of context, is staggering, 78% of the hate um, uh, that has been reported by Stop API Hate uh, has been directed towards Asian women. 60% um, of AAPI women are survivors of sexual violence and domestic violence, according to AAPI Women Lead. These are, these are really high numbers, um, and they speak to a reality that all of us have had to be vigilant um, the intersection of race and gender here is one that we cannot overlook. And today, as we are gathering to remember the, the grief of the Atlanta Spa massacre, we also remember what was reported about it. We remember that the police officer said, oh, the murderer just had a bad day. And all of these things um, bring us to this moment where we're saying no more.